Hello and welcome to the Night Girls. This is episode 556. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is the 14th of December, 2021. And both Leslie and I use she, her pronouns. Yep. Um, I think we've got maybe one more episode this year because Laura will be out of town. Yeah, we might have to Skype it in. Um, so we can do one next week, but um, we'll just Skype that yeah. one. We'll play by ear. Whatever, yeah. whatever gets put in, gets put in. Um, oh, did you do the Patreon stuff? I did. Oh, yes. We have a Patreon. We have two Patreon events coming up. Yeah. But one of which you can vote on the time and day, right? You can vote until um, Monday, I think, is when voting closes. Um, and that's for when we're going to do our VKN. We typically do our um, virtual midnight the last Sunday of the month. Um, the last Sunday of this month is the day after Christmas. And so we wanted to give people get people's input on whether they'd be traveling and maybe yeah. they wanted to do it the next week. So, um, Which is like the day after New Year's. Yes. Or is it New Year's it's, Day? It's uh, the first. Wait. No, it's the second, I think. Yeah, it's the second. Yeah. So, um, but people might be traveling that day too. Yeah. Who knows? So you can vote on when you, uh, your air conditioning just came on. Luckily, Welcome to Mississippi. There's a lot of wool in this room. <laughs> I've had a sinus headache for 48 hours. It's right under like my nostril, like the cartilage of my nostril right there. If I could get to it with something sharp. <laughs> I, I would. Mississippi cannot de decide what temperature it wants to be. On that note, thank you everyone who sent us uh, kind messages, making sure we were okay. The tornadoes actually went north of us, mm -hmm. um, so we are fine. Leslie did lose internet for a while, yeah. But um, besides that, nothing severe really happened. I think I lost a couple things on my roof, but that's it. Yeah, we lost, we lost some branches in the backyard. Um. So thank you for everyone who was concerned, but the temperature here has been fluctuating between 80 degrees to 30 degrees, mm -hmm. almost on a daily basis. And that is a big temperature jump. Yeah. And the pressure, you know, that's what tends to give me sinus headaches mm -hmm. is those pressure changes. So, um, this is not a podcast about getting old and how much that sucks. <laughs> so about weather, <laughs> um, this is generally a podcast about us talking about um, knitting. Oh, before we get into that, the events we were talking about are for our Patreon. Um, yeah. Patreon is a platform where you can support your favorite artists, whether those be um, podcasters, uh, singers, um, dancers. Magazines like Knitty. Actual like artists like that use media like... Uh, Visual artists? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a Patreon page uh, as well where you can support us there where we do a couple of events every month for our patrons. Um, but knitting, uh, would knitting. you like to go? Or would you it's like up to you. Sing? Are you, you're almost in a yeah. row. I can show you. I can okay. Go. So the first thing um, has grown a little since last week, but I'm still in the same color section. I haven't spent a ton of time on this. This is the Brioche Adventure by John Tintalo. I'm using the Hip Strings Advent Kit from last year, which is a lot of blues and greens and grays and blacks. And you're using their Yarn Advent. Yes, the Yarn Advent. Um, they do two every year, typically. I don't know that they did yarn this year. Yeah, typically they do, or at least for the past few years, they've given you the option of yarn or fiber, but I think this year they just did fiber. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going on right now. I'm mm -hmm. spinning their fiber kiln, uh, Advent. Well, it's like a... So, you know, there's different systems of counting, and so yeah, there's the like base 12 system. binaries, so they do the base 12 mm -hmm. system, um, which it took me three years to figure out what that meant. <laughs> like, what? Um, but every night, once the countdown starts, um, they do a live mm -hmm. on YouTube. It's lots of fun. So I've been watching the last two nights and spinning my fiber up. Which I don't have with me because it's on a wheel. It's on the laundry room. But it's a great little, and they sit and chat and spend that days. Yeah. Jill and Nick, um, that's the husband and wife team behind Hip Strings, are really interesting people. Yeah. And fun to talk to. So yeah. I, I'm not a social media person, but um, 
I can imagine that's an entertaining. Uh, Do we consider YouTube uh, social media? To know that it was there, I would have to be on social media. Oh, okay, so, gotcha. Um, not necessarily, and there's nothing like if you enjoy social media, awesome for you. I'm not, you can, I'm not trying to cancel it. It's just not for me. Um, so yeah, this I'm still on the third section out of six, so not a lot of progress on that. Um, but I did pull out an old project, and that's actually Ooh. what's been getting a lot of my time this month. Um, I'm almost out of old projects, which is good. I'm happy with that. It's the end of the month almost, too. Um, so I pulled out the... Or end of the month. <laughs> it's almost end the end of the, the month, but it's almost the end of the year, too. Um, so I'm, this is the Hasukai Cowl. Oh, look at that. Uh, this was started in 2018. I went and looked at show notes to see when I started it. This is knit out of Jared Flood's um, Brooklyn Tweed Plains uh, yarn, which I think is a Rambouillet. Ooh, I've actually got the tag here so I can tell you. Look at that. It's a lace weight. Um, yeah, it's their lace weight yarn. And it is a Rambouillet. Look at you. And it's the Treehouse colorway. And this is the last bit of the third skein. You have four? I had three. Oh, wow. You're almost through. Yeah. So... Does this say get a ruffle too? Yes. Awesome. You yeah. will go through that yarn very quickly. Yeah, then. that's, uh, I just started the ruffle. So this is where I was when I picked it up with this little safety pin here. Wow. So I knit quite a bit up. Um, so the way that I, because I didn't take notes, because why would I do that? That would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, was that I... I joined new yarn here. This is at the bottom. So I just counted how many rows from the new yarn to the ruffle. Um, and that's what I did on the other side. Gotcha. And um, so now I've got like 16 rows on the ruffle. I think I've done two or three of them. So I've still got, you know, 14 or 13 rows left. I'll go fast though. And then once it's done, this will be, um, it's garter. So it'll stretch quite a bit when I block it. And you can wear it as a tube because it is a hollow tube, mm -hmm. or you can wrap it, you know, around your neck, or you know, wear it in a couple different ways. Is so. it keeping? Are you keeping it? I don't know. Okay. It's not perfect because there are a I couple do spots remember where there's some where, um, um, garter I, issues. Yeah, where I didn't actually, where I was doing stockinette instead of um, garter stitch. It's easy to do. So. Um, I don't know. I probably will keep it because I don't like giving things away that aren't not perfect, but like aren't are visibly imperfect. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It'll be nice for you to wear outside if it ever cools yeah. down. And it's a light layer, so. Yeah. So, yep, that's basically what I've been, I've been uh, knitting on this and watching some shows that we have on Plex that are horror type mm. things that you wouldn't like them, so. I would not like them. Um, yep, that's basically it. What about you? Oh. So I started a new sock. This isn't actually in the show notes. I will add it. Maybe. Maybe I won't. <laughs> It'll get added at some point. Doing it live. I know, right? Um, I just cast this on the other day when I went to pick up an order from Target. So this is a sock. It's going to be Wendy Johnson's toe up sock um, with a gusset that I typically do a lot of. And I am using some Knit Spin Farm. Oop, there we go. And um, her Targi Sport Base, which is a superwash Targi. 90% of that and 10% nylon. It's 350 yards. Um, this was part of her club back in August. It is for Coloring Book Day. And it's um, stripes of blank paper and then a rainbow of crayons. So, um... Yeah, it's really That's pretty. where I am right now. You should show the skein. I will in a second. Do it now. I am knitting this over 56 stitches. I'm doing toe up. I'm magic looping on size one needles. It is living in my little fat squirrel gnome bag. My David the gnome bag. And it looks like this. So it alternates that white blank paper with stripes of color. It kind of reminds me of Sesame Street. A little bit. Hmm. Interesting. 
It's just bright and cheerful. I don't know. <laughs> That's what? Laura's like, I disagree, but I don't well, want to like hurt your feelings <laughs> noise. <laughs> I think of Sesame Street, like, I think of yellow as a primary color to in Sesame fair, Street. To be fair, I've probably watched five episodes of Sesame Street in my life. But it is, like, so. a bright Muppety color. I could see that. Um, so that is the first thing on my needles. The second thing on my needles uh, is another pair of socks because I have four pairs of socks to get done by Christmas, which looking back at it, I shouldn't have waited till after, till the first of December to guest on, but, um, it's okay. I just need to do five inches of sock knitting a day. Is that all? That's it. <laughs> um, but with the, this is sports, so it will go fast. And I did do the largest pair of socks first. So the second largest pair of socks is what I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is a bag that I got from um, a long dog yarn kit. It is Knit Two Together is the bag, bag manufacturer, I guess. Um, it was super cute. It came with a kit and knit fabric on the inside. Like the fabric is knit stitch and it just was cozy. And it came with a cute skein of yarn, a sock kit. She had an update today, and I was so good and didn't get anything. Um, this is Deep, Deep, Deep Stash. Let me find the tag. I feel like I threw it in here. Is that more stitches around than you usually do? It is. Okay. So these socks are for my brother-in-law, and he has score feet, yeah. essentially. So his socks need to be around 10 inches around. So I do nine inches um, so that, you know, it's got a little bit of negative ease. Yep. And um, then his feet are just about, they're the same size as my sister's in length. So they are like a size 12 woman's shoe. So this is deep stash. I know how old this is because it was dated. So this is biscotti and cheap that I apparently bought in July of 2011. So that's 10-year-old stash. Yep. Um, I was going through looking for some yarn to knit up for Matt, and I wanted something self-striping. This is 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon. It is a French Quebec dyer, um, and it is 384 yards. And I'm knitting this on 72 stitches around and I'm using the vanilla is a new black colorway that um colorway or pattern or I'm sorry pattern um that was a pattern that I did for my brother-in-law last year and he really liked it you can see the start of the itty bitty heel yeah it has that weird name heel it's like some greek or something name no this is this is different oh it's, Euclidean, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's, this is not the Euclidean heel. Okay. Uh, but it does form a triangle through ribbing. Um, so, yeah, I went four inches and then started that. And tonight, after I leave here and I can concentrate on it, because it does take a yeah. little bit of concentration, I will continue to knit on this. But in the meantime, I'm going to knit on my sister's socks because I got to knit on something. Life is so... You got I don't, have, I don't have enough time to uh, do a whole lot of not knitting time. Um, I took this on to my kids' choir concert last night. They were excellent. They sang it like the Charlie Brown medley, and it was super cute. Um, so they did a great job, and I got a little bit of knitting done on that. Not bad, because I cast that on on Sunday. Um, I'm almost at the five inch point, but that means that I'm supposed to have five, ten inches on the sock. And obviously, oh, that I was going to ask happened. you why you switched from those to that, but I guess while we're recording, you can't really. Um, so these ones have been living in the backpack, so I cast them on when I was at Target oh, in the okay. line pickup the other day. You just needed something a little more brainless for. Recording. Yes, yeah. and I needed something a little bit easier and um when my kids were playing a game a little bit today uh, i did a kahoot and um so kahoot is kind of like a online platform that allows you to create like trivia games oh, okay. and you can do different levels i thought it might actually be fun for ssk yeah um anyway so instead of me standing in front of them and doing like book talks oh, like sure so yeah like book talks i put on there like in this book 
in this middle grade horror book, scarecrows keep getting closer and closer and closer, and then they have to try to guess what the title is. So it's a sneaky way of book talking without book talking. Um, so I was testing it on one of the EL classes. What book is that? Today. That's Small Spaces. Oh, okay. It just, by Catherine it makes Arden. Me think of the angel from. It does. It's very similar. Uh, it's I know I've book talked that book before here, but it is about a girl named Ollie whose mom's just passed away. And she runs into this woman down by a river who's like crying and she's got a book in her hand and the woman tries to throw the book into the river and Ollie snatches it out of her hand. And it turns out that it's the journal of this woman um, whose husband essentially made a deal with the devil to bring back his brother. The, the two brothers were fighting over her. So Ollie falls asleep while reading this book. And the next day she goes on a field trip to this farm. And when she goes to the farm, she wanders off because oh, Ollie yeah, is I not the this. best behaved. Yeah, and she looks down and she sees the gravestones of the woman and her husband that were in the journal. And it freaks her out and she gets back on the school bus and they go back to the school. Um, and on their way, like a mile from the farm, the school bus breaks down. And the scarecrows just seem to be getting closer and closer and closer. And the teacher tries to go back to the farm to get help. And the bus driver tells Ollie if she wants to survive the night, she better run. And meanwhile, the scarecrows are getting closer and closer and closer. So instead of doing that big, long book talk that I just did, um... I can do the little trivia and some of these like that I've book talked before so they should already know them yeah. and be familiar with them so it's that little like gotcha moment like one of the questions is in this journal Greg talks about his goal to become popular that's Diary of a Wimpy Kid oh okay so like they're all gonna you know it's there's some really easy ones and some that are a little bit more difficult are but they I've allowed to collaborate about. Oh, I wasn't going to allow that, but they can also be on teams. Like, that's something that Kahoot allows you to do. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, Kahoot's a fun way of peaking interest. Teams, the probably least engaging chat <laughs> app for kids. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't like it's useful for me. Oh, uh, I wasn't. But... Yeah, they can play in teams. Not I wasn't thinking that they would use teams to play oh, in teams, okay. but they could because they have access to teams okay. through Microsoft. Like they can. That's how we do a lot of tutoring is through teams. But yeah, it's not super engaging. That's pretty funny. Although it does allow you to search for gifts right in the chat, which. I engage. I, I think that feature is turned off. It is not school. for us. <laughs> I respond to most everything with a GIF, if possible. <laughs> I bet you do. Um, you have a, f a finished thing. Oh, I do have a finished thing because I went on a field trip on Friday to go see a Christmas carol, and there was a band concert last week. So I got a lot of good knitting time in after I saw y'all, and I finished the mustache sock. The Hawaii volcano. Yeah. Ones. So this is mustache yarns. It was her Camp Cal National Park colorway for this year, and it is Hawaii volcanoes. And I just did a simple top-down sock with heel flap. Um, kind of using like the yarn harlot's basic recipe, which I have memorized. And yeah. Look, socks. Giant socks. So these are the largest of the socks that I had to do on the smallest needle gauge. And they are done. Yeah, I like them. Yay. I think they're really pretty. If she does this yarn again, I think I will get it for mom and then um, get Zanali for dad and make them each appear. Swap, swap yeah. them out. But yeah. So super cool. Super You'll have bright. to tag them somehow so they know whose are whose. Uh, well, well, your dads are top down on the monster. <laughs> and also, size of feet. <laughs> there is a substantial difference. Yeah, and your mom's feet are narrow. Yes. Um, these I did 56 stitches around. I'm hoping they're big enough around. I feel like they should be. My parents hike a lot. They're pretty skinny folks. Um, so, hopefully they will. If not, 
I will rip them back and give them to mom and then do another pair for dad. Cause I can, because they're top down, I can easily rip out the um, grafting at the toes to like here. <laughs> I so rarely hear you call your dad, dad. I don't. It's did I just call him dad? Did, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is wheezy, usually. Um, on each skein is washed in tuft woolens. And that was the other thing that he wanted. He wanted some tuft woolens, um, her lip balm he loves. Mm. So I got him some of that as well to go with these. Mama got so, a teacup with the, like, strainer in to go with hers. Oh, yeah, yeah, the David's tea. Yeah, this is not David's tea. This, this is Plum Deluxe, but similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's a little bit smaller. With those very fine sieves. Yep, that sit inside of them. So, um, yeah, that's it for me. That's my finished object. Do you have any finished objects? Uh, yeah, it's sort of finished. Um, you okay? Yeah, I just had to look and see if I finished with knits or pearls. So, um, I worked on a sewing project this week. Ooh. And what did you make me? It's the Ramona Shacket. No, you did not make that for me. So it's basically like a big flannel jacket, yeah, jacket thing. Um, and this was also part of uh, the Indie Stitch kits. Oh, I do like that color, though. Um, so I have to go back and fix the sleeve. I didn't catch uh... quite the edge. But um, it's mostly done, except I've got a little thing I have to fix, um, a seam that missed part of the fabric. And I've got to put buttons on. Um, That's cute. it doesn't have buttons. Is it cozy? Can I feel? It's flannel, so Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is cozy. Um, That'll be great for when you're working. I'm going to put it on because it's cool in here. <laughs> yeah, it is cool in here. Um, so it gave you options for regular pockets or flat pockets. I so rarely use chest pockets that I figured I didn't need a flap. Um, you could fit your whole phone in that pocket, though. It's I, a substantial pocket. I could. Um, I forgot to put the collar stay in and it was already seemed like surged together and I was like well guess it's not gonna have a collar stay um what does a collar stay do it helps the this part stand up oh like it gives it some rigidity so that when you fold it over this bottom part will stay firm gotcha um could you have like a ribbon or something on the inside I I don't care okay. I could yes absolutely but I don't care um so yeah I again I this is just needs a button so that's why it's pinned right now it's big and cozy and it looks nice and cozy um, for sure. It mostly can be done on the serger. Um, nice. There are some parts where you just have to like top stitch, which you use your sewing machine for, or you could use a cover stitch machine for. But um, it's hell to rip that out. The the one thing that I wish I had done. So this pattern can be kind of confusing, and it may be all sewing patterns. So I'm not trying to like come down hard on this specific pattern, but so there are so many options for how you want to do it and there's nothing that says okay if you want a long sleeve with this kind of pocket with no hood do these steps right was a hood an option yes Ooh. i already had a fabric or i would have done a hood i was gonna say um but so you'll come to different sections and it'll be like um here we go so to add a shawl collar um, follow these instructions to do an exposed seam go to this page to do an enclosed seam go to this page it's and like choose your own adventure sort of but you go to that page and it assumes you've already done some of the steps oh. from previous so um because of that i went ahead and let me get this off and show um when i cut the pattern out the fronts were mirrored and so this edge right here this is the selve edge you can see mm -hmm. it's a little bit lighter because that's the very very edge of the fabric and because i didn't realize that it was going to attach in this specific way i, I should have attached this further on so that like lighter bit or didn't got you? covered mm -hmm. um and there are a couple other things like that where because i was i'm not like I couldn't sell anything that I sewed <laughs> because there's an expectation of quality that would not be met. Well, you are learning and right. I think you and need to be fine. gentle not... with yourself because you're still learning. But what I'm saying is 
what am I saying? That I, because I've been doing some things for so long, I sort of expect to just be able to pick other things up as easily. I can see that. And when that doesn't happen, I get annoyed and then try to rush through uh. and just make it work and I end up making it a little bit worse. So, um, so maybe put things down when you start to get frustrated and come back to them yeah, later. Maybe. Or read instructions fully. And maybe go through and like tag every step that I need to do. I mean, you are not taking like online classes. This is all, you know. Yeah. Reading and writing. Well, not writing, I mean, but it, reading. And it's not going to be saleable, but it'll be wearable. Yeah. It'll be perfectly fine for me. And if you were to do it again, it might be a saleable. I will have learned. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm happy with it. Um, I've got to get one of these. Laura and I talked about this, actually. Um, I just discovered that these things existed um, maybe two months ago or something. And then Laura sent me um, a link like a week ago and was like, did you know that this existed? You should not get one of those because someone might oh, have okay. gotten one. It's a, it's, one of, it's a sewing gadget that lets you perfectly place buttons. Um, like the, all the different... Uh, they're connected, so if it's you... It's accordion style, right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't tell me what it's called, but yeah, you like place it at where you want the top button to be, and all the rest of them evenly space themselves, and then you yeah, just it mark. unfolds. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I'm glad I don't have to purchase one, because I was thinking about it. Um, we, we had this discussion, like, two months ago, and so I told Mom that you wanted one and didn't have one. Okay. So... Cool. I will not to spoil use it. your Christmas present, but you should not order one. <laughs> okay. My mom would say you don't order anything for yourself two months before Christmas because then you'll spoil a surprise. And I'm like, okay. That's fair. Um, that's it. I don't have any spinning. Oh, I have spinning. I bet you do. I have. Um, I did not rewind those bobbins, so that's on the show notes because could not be bothered. But um. I got some good spinning time in Friday night. I did a Zoom with friends. And then Saturday night, I did the Daedalus Zoom. And I finished the singles of the Paul Worth and the Plausible Implausibility colorway. Those pinks and purples. Um, and those are to be applied next. But then I picked up my Daedalus. Um, wow, those are big old bobbins. Yeah, this is the Starling. They have nice size bobbins, but also my bobbins match my spinning. Um, and I started spinning. Can you see all those Tweety bits? Mm -hmm. This um, fiber from Spotted Circus Alpacas. It's her woolly tweed base. It is mostly um, a South American wool, and then 20%, I believe, is... Oh, I think I have it. Um... So this is Spotted Circus Alpacas. 80% is South American wool. And 20% is these black viscose uh, neps, which are also white. And this is her Neon Mermaid colorway. And it glows under a black light. If I was to wear it to a rave, I would be all set. So you can see all these Tweety bits. Um, I spun this worsted. And what I mean by that was because it was in top format... I thought that I could short forward draw it um, to create a smooth single that has most of the air knocked out because I was kind of afraid if I woolen spun it that these neps would kind of go everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, this is not Elizabeth's fault, it's this base because I've had this discussion with a couple other people. It's kind of annoying because that 80% viscose um, these neps tend to like chunk up mm -hmm. and so it does not give a smooth even drafting consistency is it like sorry silk where sometimes they're they'll gather in clumps in sections? um it doesn't like clump like that it just it's just not a smooth drafting experience if you do it worsted okay so, um, Kathleen, one of the ladies on the Daedalus forum, uh, she's going to get, she just bought another braid, um, cause we were discussing this and she's going to try it from the fold, which might be a better experience. And our friend Jillian, 
uh, Marina, who's an amazing spinning teacher. I think she's spinning at Woolen as well. So I was just worried about losing all the neps. So I think I'm going to try it again. And Elizabeth does gorgeous fiber. I have some more of her fiber to spin. Um, but I think I might try it from the folds, which creates a woolen prep and spin it woolen. Or I might, um, just, I don't want to run it through a drum carter because I think all those neps would like get everywhere. Mm -hmm. But, um, I might make faux logs. And everything you carted for the next year would have <laughs> Or 20 years. Yeah. Um, I might make some faux logs and play with it that way and create a woolen prep, um, a semi woolen prep and spin it woolen. Um, at some point I'll probably hold off until ply away or, um, SSK to buy more of that to play because I have lots of fiber, um, to play with right now. And I'm, I'm, you know, it's the end of the year when we make goals and I'm like, I'm going to start spinning down the stash. So we'll see. We'll see how into that I get. Um, so that is ready to be plied. And like I said earlier, I have the hip strings advent calendar on my wheel. Currently last year I spun it all as a gradient, divided every oh, like little one. bit in half and two plied. They were all silk blends, weren't they? Yes, they're always all silk blends. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, cause that is hip strings, like favorite okay. thing. She likes the toothier Merino, but, um, like a 26 micron Merino and then silk. Um, and they're a combination of bats and her signature blend fibers. Um, this year it's not a gradient. It's just all different colors. So I'm spinning them just end to end as they come. Mm -hmm. They also give you a 12 sided die where you can roll mm -hmm. and, um, I'm going to chain ply and I'm spinning that on the Lendrum upright on a woolly winder. Um, Merino silk is not typically my favorite, but I love hip strings enough yeah. that I will spin it for them. Uh, I have one other advent calendar that is actually, you start on the 26th of December or the 25th. It's the Ingle Nook. It's the 12 days after Christmas. There's a special word for that. I the Epiphany, it. maybe? I don't know. Don't um, know. So I have that to spin after Christmas. You but I have to, because I'm going to my parents for a bit, I have to figure out what I want to take with me to work on because it can't all be socks all the time. I mean, it could be. It could be. Hopefully I'll have all these socks finished at some point. I anticipate you will have two and a half pairs done mm. when you leave for your parents. Hi. That's probably a good call. And then, um, thank you. I probably will take moms to work on because we're exchanging gifts a little bit early, like on the 22nd, mm -hmm. but if I'm, I'm staying through Christmas, yeah. so moms can be a little bit later and she's fine with that. Um, we are going to the Dollywood. Ooh. I know my parents got tickets for us to go walk around. I'm going to try to get Wheezy on a roller coaster. He told me he's not doing it. <laughs> uh, they just want to walk around and look at Christmas lights. We are totally riding rides unbeknownst to my parents um and gatlinburg where dollywood is if you're not from oh god that area that's gonna be a nightmare is um or around it, an hour and a half from my parents house it's now, a very family oriented fan destiny like de vacation destination mm, it's like a mini disney there's a lot of stuff there <laughs> I've been to the aquarium there and mm. that um, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Did you go on the like the ski lift thing where you can go up and there's like a ski lift thing and um, I don't know. In the aquarium? No, it's oh. it's a different oh, part no. of Gatlinburg no. where you can see like the Smoky Mountains from a ski lift mm -mm. because... Is it one of those enclosed things? Yes, yeah. it is. Um, I don't do that. I don't do heights oh, well, typically. Yeah, I just... I don't um, do people. So. <laughs> and uh, we'll be masked the whole time and everyone's vaccinated. Yeah. But I'm boosted. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't gotten my booster yet. I need to go. You need to do that. 
can make an appointment at Walgreens. I'm going to be off all next week. So yeah, that's a good time to do it. Plus, if you get sick, then I won't have to deal with you. You can be sick on your own There's with your husband. <laughs> you can be grumpy by yourself. I have a, a med check um, tomorrow with my nurse practitioner. So if they're giving them out, I'll get one then. Ooh, that'd be good. Um, so, yeah, we'll be in the Knoxville area for a bit. And, oh, yeah, it's like an hour and a half each way. So I'll get lots of carnething and I'm going to try to convince them that we should go to the Smoky Mountain Spinnery. Oh yeah, it's, I went there once. Yeah, it's really lovely and that is also in Gatlinburg um, if it is open. Isn't that like on the second floor of like a tackle shop or something? So her husband owns like a tackle shop. Yeah. And they share the space. But I don't she, know. She had really nice stuff from what I remember. Oh yeah, she has lots of fiber. Um, she is one of the people I called looking for combs and she has a different type of comb mm -hmm. that I want to look at. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We will see for sure. Ooh, I got, I came to a new color. Very exciting. That happens in self-striping. <laughs> but not the other self stri I was, I pulled out some vintage stash that was originally going to be my brother-in-law's socks and I started knitting and I got an inch in and it was not self-striping even though it said so it was self-striping. Mm -hmm. But it's also from a dyer who faked her own death. Yeah. So I mean, there we go. What are you going to do? <laughs> and it was from like 2008. So, and she's no, and hasn't been dying since like 2010. Um, so it's vintage, vintage, vintage stash, but I'd like to use up some, we'll have to maybe next episode talk about our goals for the year that we either accomplished or didn't accomplish. I don't even remember what mine oh, were. So. Okay. I have mine written down yeah. in my journal. Um, I know you were doing the Amy Beth journaling thing that, that was part of your mm -hmm. goal. Um, we'll have to rewatch maybe the first episode or two. Yeah, I don't care that much. But okay. Maybe you do. <laughs> I know I wanted well, I to know make my some goals. sewing. <laughs> I wanted to make some sewing garments. Um, I don't remember anything else. Maybe other people will remember yeah, for you. Maybe other people will. Um, probably they will because they have better memories than me for sure. <laughs> So I want to see what I was able to accomplish and I w still have a week. So maybe there's something on there that I can still <gasps> get off the bucket list. I mean, certainly you don't have anything else to do. <laughs> so. I actually have what? Two weeks almost. Yeah. Two weeks. Um, so. What about you had like a um, knit X amount of things that are hand spun. I did. And I can't remember what that number is, but I feel like I, accomplished it. You knit a lot of things out of hand spun. I, I did. I knit several sweaters and hats. Hats for sure. Um, a baby blanket. Um, so I feel like I did. And I had like so many socks. And one thing that I did not get done that's still possible is knit one row on Even Star. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. It's totally possible. So that might still happen. After I get back from my parents, and maybe I'll take Even Star with me. Uh, that sounds like a terrible plan. Yeah, I really, I would not. Um, I feel like you need quiet. Oh, I cannot have anything going on with Even Star, um, which is why it never gets worked on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we'll have to look because I definitely I think I had finished cleaning washing a fleece. Wash three fleeces, maybe. So, I know I did at least two. There's still time to wash a fleece, too, there as is. well. Um, so, we'll see what my goals were and what I've accomplished and kind of think about what goals I want to accomplish for the new year. Um, for sure. So, I'm still reading the Gobelino London series. Um, I haven't been reading a ton this week. I've been working a lot and um, just haven't felt like reading. So um, I have been watching the Wheel of Time series. I think I'm one episode away from being current. Mm. It's okay. I mean, I don't really know what's going on, but that's okay. I mean, I never, I'm, as I, watch the show I'm actually pretty sure that I read the first 
book or maybe the first two books because a lot of the terminology is similar to me. Um, it's familiar to you. Yeah, yeah. Familiar is the word, yeah. Um, and it's things I can't remember being in any other book that I read, so... Um, They've been out for a long time. Yeah, and I, I think that someone recommended them to me. It might have actually been Kate Irish Diva um, who recommended them to me, and I think I got a couple in and um, must have gotten distracted. That happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm watching um, Yellow Jackets, which is a series on Showtime um, about a group of girls, um, soccer champions, or they're teenagers, and they're going to a soccer championship, and they're plane crashes in oh, the wilderness in Canada. And they have to survive. And they have to survive. Do they eat each other? It, well, I don't know, because it flashes back and forth from when they're kids and now as adults. Oh. So, um... But there, so far, the show's only focusing on, like, three or four of the adults, and the crash had, like, 20 kids. Gotcha. So, we'll see. They totally ate each other. Christina Ricci plays, like, this annoying, nebby, like, um... <laughs> I love those, the way you use the word nebby. ...character. Uh-huh. And, um, like, it took me two episodes to realize it was her. She just disappeared into the character. It was really, wow. She plays it really well. So, um, Yeah. What about you? What are you reading? I have not been reading a ton because I've been trying to get through some socks. Mm -hmm. um, so I have been watching Death in Paradise, um, which is on BritBox. Is that a cozy mystery? Yeah, it's like a cozy Caribbean mystery mm -hmm. series. Cool. Um, so I've been enjoying that. And what else have I been watching? Leslie came over and we, we watched, watched Frogger. Frogger. <laughs> which I enjoy immensely. Um, and we've also been watching Queen of the Universe, which mm -hmm. is meh so far. We're going to give it another couple episodes and see what happens. It's hard because, like, I mean, it's so the premise is that it's a actual singing competition for drag queens. Yep. Because drag queens, generally speaking, lip sync their songs. Yeah. Right? And so this is them, you know, actually singing and... That part is great. For me, it's awkward because um, most of what I've seen, um, Trixie Mattel is one of the judges. Uh -huh. She's the, the drag queen judge. There's also like Vanessa Williams, Leona Lewis, and Van uh, Michelle Versage. Michelle Versage, yeah. yeah. And then Graham Norton hosts it, mm -hmm. which is kind of awkward. Yeah. But it's weird to. S I feel like Trixie has to like be nice to everybody and that's not who tricks i mean that's not who drag queens are in general like part of being or a drag queen general, is being like a little bit snarky and funny yeah. and you make fun of everybody else but you make fun of yourself too and you don't get to see that as much in this because she's trying to be diplomatic yeah um, and some people are really doing a good job yeah but it also is ending episodes on cliffhangers, which I do not like. Or I hate that. Like, if you're going to send people home, tell me who's going home. Don't make me wait a week. Yeah. Because by that time, I don't care. Yeah. And I've forgotten who I wanted to go home. Yeah. And... Yeah. Um, so I think it's a show that's better binged, yeah. like, all at once. Wait until, like, the last week. Yeah. It's on Paramount um, and VH1. So, yeah. Oh, I finished all my colors. Boom. A little rainbow going on. Hey, Buff Buff. So, yeah, that's what's going on. You. I love her. She's a good girl. She's got, a, she does like a sad face really well. Aww. You gonna come up? Come up. You can make it. Come on. I made space for you. Aww. Hey, Buff. Um, so that's about it. Oh, I have one more thing. What, you, what else do you have? So, um, in the vein of pulling out stuff that I've started and then ignored for a couple years. Yeah. Um, I pulled out this rug hooking kit. Oh. That I bought, I can't even tell you when. It's been a while. I'd have to go back and look at my Etsy history. Um, and it's in this frame. I only brought the top part of it up. It sits in a little thing. Um, and I had it's done like a, mountain. a little bit over here and then stopped. Because um, it's another one of those where, like, you have to sort of develop the muscle memory to yeah. make this work. And I don't, I still don't have it. Um, and it's awkward and that annoys me. I don't like not being good at things. Um, 
so yeah, it is. It will be like a mountain scene. It's it's sort of like pointillism when you view it super close. It doesn't make sense. You kind yeah. of have to step away. So there will be mountains and skies, and then there will be like layers, like hills and mm -hmm. valleys and stuff. So you I'm made just some going good progress across, and then do across here. So, yep. Um, I don't even remember where I got this. I'll have to look at my Etsy history. And if I can find it, then I'll link it um, in our show notes. Our show notes are on our website, which is the Knit Girls with the three L's. L's. Um, that's where they always are. And we try to put everything that we talk about in the show notes. Yep. Um, what else? So we have a fail along coming up for our patrons, our supporters on Patreon, where we're going to... Finish their mosaic. No, we're gonna do paper bags. We're doing both. Oh, I don't want to do both. Because just you just do paper the bags, cement snowflakes. thing. It only takes like fifteen minutes, and then you put it aside, and it has to dry for like ever. Okay. And then. Um, oh, okay. I see. I thought you were talking about the painting. No, no, no. This okay. is the the mosaic with the cement that we have to put, gotcha. put on. That's fine. So we just have to mix it, put it in, and then set it aside. Oh, I found a different thing to do too. Okay. Um. And then we're going to do paper bag snowflakes. I ordered overnight. Yes. Um, Did you order glitter paper bags? Did I order what paper bags? Glitter bag? paper bags. No. That would be amazing. Because the way, I thought about ordering colored, just like colored, yeah. but the way, you're actually gluing the outsides of them together. So you'll never see that. When you open it up, it's only the inside oh, of the bags Oh, if they're not all the way, well, yeah. white would be colored all the way through, right? The, that's what I got is oh, white. Oh, okay. Because white plus snow, like, that makes sense. She could glitter puffy paint or something yeah. to decorate with. Um, so My those will be at your house tomorrow. will be, oh, okay. Because um, we'll be doing it at your house anyway. I had so. a package show up. One of my missing packages oh, came today. Wrong? Um, my Duluth Trading Company oh, okay. that's been missing for two weeks showed up today. Yeah, I had a package. Um, it's actually downstairs. But I ordered this, like, it's um, a ring, nothing fancy, but it's just a ring that's got a magnet on it. Uh -huh. So that when I'm sewing and I pull out pins, I can let oh, them stick that's right smart. to that. Um, I bought it on Etsy at, like, in the middle of November. And I bought it from a lady who lives around where your parents live in Tennessee, which is about mm -hmm. 400 miles away. Something like that. Um, it showed up yesterday. My Kim Dyes yarn showed up from September. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I get it. The post, I'm, I'm not trashing on the post office i'm certain they're probably underpaid and overworked and they're doing the best they can so it is she just crazy had sent me a replacement package because it was like three months mm -hmm. gone um because i bought it at shenandoah virtual shenandoah and um the original package showed up yesterday and i sent her a message and she said no just keep it merry christmas because oh, i offered to pay for it well probably the insurance she probably filed an insurance claim i hope she got it yeah. like um, although it was more than $50 worth of stuff, but, um, it well, was just, it was very sweet of her. It is. And it was little fiber dumplings that now I have a pound. <laughs> That's exactly what you need more of, is more fiber, fiber dumplings. fiber dumplings. Laura get, got some, um, yarn and, um, from Naima Bond, Sister Anansi Yarn. And this is the... She's out of Chicago. Purple Crab Nebula in the Zebra DK base, and it makes me very happy. So happy. So I'm going to knit some kind of textured hat out of it. I got it for me, but Leslie wanted it. I so. was like, ooh, that's pretty. So. I got a set of mini skeins that are gorgeous and yeah. very happy for me, and then another skein of yarn, so it all works out. Yeah, so I'm excited about trying that. Um, so yeah, uh, we, like I said earlier, we, you know, we may record in person again before the end of the year it may just be virtual whatever works we'll see and um hopefully we'll go over our goals for 2021 mm. and see what we actually i'll do my like 10 patterns that i want to get knit throughout mm. the year and also revisit the ones that i think i did like four this year yeah because you put them on a ravelry um i do i do like a it's a good board. way to organize it you know, yeah ravelry is not without its problems but yeah organization wise it can well be it's part of my library feature so mm -hmm. it allows me to organize it inside my library okay well you guys have an awesome week and we will talk to you again sometime next week bye y'all bye